Okay, so we're very pleased to be in the show here at the Marshall Gallery, uh, and they've selected some really great pieces, uh, some uh, newer works just shown up, these, this one, these here. And so all the work is really based on a similar premise of understanding origins of uh, where things start, and then it, de it derives from there, it goes, it spreads out from there, right? So, but one of the primary um, operating factors in the work is using the material for its purpose and choosing the right um, uh, surfaces, polishing, not to polish, in order to exploit the material itself. And so if you, when you look at the work, we should be able to consider the back of the work as a mirror almost because it's polished and then it's going to reflect and project the light and should end, end up multiplying the interior space a little bit too. So it borrows on some historical movements, uh, namely Cubism, Constructivism, uh, outside of the political aspects of those uh, movements. But then it moves further into some other um, movements and contemporary things too. So uh, you can see if the work gets, uh, I've chosen to add some polished areas, some matte surfaces, and everything's done for purpose of conducting the light and accentuating of the sculpture and the, the physical elements of it. These two pieces in particular are a product of an injury I recently had, which took away the use of one of my arms back now, but or coming back. But so normally a lot of these surfaces would be cut mechanically, like on this here. This is all cut traditional, rich cutting um, with stones, uh, not diamonds. So I'm interested also in this aspect of the glass making is the tradition and the historical elements of the making process. So where we have the incised lines here, we just, I did it here, but instead it's modeled in the clay. And then I've come back with some mechanical tools to accentuate it and make it happen a little bit more. So there should be a, a similar thing happening here too. And we have a couple, there's a couple different kinds of glass. We have, these are lead-based glass and they're the materials from Germany, uh, this material is from the Czech Republic. And what's really great about this, this piece in particular, is that it, right now, in the light that I'm seeing, it has a green tinge to it, it's gray, but it actually is blue, violet, and gray. And so that happens because of the, the composition of the glass. And this piece uh, is interesting for me, is from a series called Passages. And so there's multiple kind of passages that are created here, but it had to do with a Czech word that you would find in the in the, metro, in the transit areas when you go from a sub in the subway and it meant transitioning or to change the place and so that was always interesting to me and at the time my life was changing we were moving from Seattle to uh, northern Bohemia and then later to Texas and so these are big transitions in our life so this also became kind of a transcendental piece for me so that's why it's called universal transit and that also has to do with some Buddhist philosophy and the use of the color relating to some peaceful states. Um, and then this is another new one here. We're starting to explore more textures and trying to, I think one of the important things about glass making is, or all, all art in general, but for me using glass is I really want the audience to know how it's made in a sense. So the, the, the mark of the maker. So where we choose to make these really rigid planes very finished and then leaving some of the model surface straight out of the mold and so that we can see that this was made by hand and that there's something left of that um, expression and so we don't take out the make it too cold we we allow it to have some life so on this one the surface can i rotate it the surface really gets exciting for me of this modeled surface here where it really breaks up breaks up the light uh, more than it would do if this was a flat plane or a flat refined surface so we get this modeled uh, effect and it almost becomes metallic which I, I really enjoyed too and in some again if we're going back to history and the science and the materials and things uh, glasses historically has some reference to metal and then recently I saw something posted about plastic and uh, so I kind of think is it of it as the ultimate plastic 
it's the for me it's the best to express my ideas 